I will try to move that. It's gonna be a little bit awkward, but. No, just uh, then you know whatever's comfortable. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to like go this way. You can just I'll I'll we'll face you. It's so. like the. Yeah, no. I mean it's no. like yeah. it's like there the goes your peripheral. <laughs> Welcome to Regarding, a show where we talk about theater. My name is Maria Paz Alegre. I'm an artist and a theater critic. My name is Ray Yamanoche. I'm a playwright. Our guest today is a graduate of the Lila Atchison Wallace Playwriting Fellowship at the Juilliard School. She's a member of the Kilroys, a TV writer for the award-winning program The Americans, and playwright of 72 Miles to Go, currently running at Roundabout Theater. Welcome, Hilary that is to Regarding. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you for coming. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, having never written a TV script before, what was it like to suddenly jump into a writer's room for the Emmy Glo Golden Globe Peabody Award winning show, The Americans? Uh, I mean, it was exciting and terrifying. I, I, like, I mean, obviously I had no idea what I was doing, but I couldn't let on that I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> So I um, asked for all the scripts of every episode that had been written and mm -hmm. spent like a week mm -hmm. like just binge reading them and trying to like teach wow. myself how to write on the show. Mm. Um, and then like practice like writing scenes and you know, so by the time we got to my episode I had sort of figured it out but yeah, but I mean it was awesome. I also feel like everything that I thought I knew about writing just got completely blown up working on that show in a good way. Wow. How did you like how did you sort of enter that without having like any TV experience? Um, dumb luck. Really? <laughs> oh, damn. No, I uh, I um, happened to have the same theater agent as the showrunner nice. and they were oh, reading wow. for yeah. writers and and the yeah. showrunner was like, we want a playwright. Is that what happened? Or? Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Playwrights yeah. are becoming more of a they commodity really are. in TV, so that's They fucking... really are. I mean, I think playwrights understand character mm -hmm. in a way that you don't quite learn in the TV world. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And so there's like, and I mean, I personally think that's why TV is getting so much better also. But... Right. Do, is there anything you feel like you learn from TV writing that sort of uh, cross over into your playwright? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, efficiency. For sure, and oh. and like how to drop a scene, like how to start a scene right in the middle of action, mm -hmm. and sort of trust that your audience, mm. if you do it well, your audience will go along with uh, for the ride with you. Right, right. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think like especially working on the Americans, everything was so much about like sometimes the most interesting moment between two people is them just talking about what they're gonna have for dinner, mm. and like how you hmm. have these like slice of life. Mm -hmm. everyday, like, universal, relatable conversations that are, like, mixed in with a spy genre that made it, like, such an incredible show. But I feel yeah. like 72 Miles really came out of what I learned working on that show. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't yeah, know that there was a correlation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I also had, like, a lot of downtime. <laughs> <laughs> Staying in my office, uh, doing nothing, right. so I was like, whatever, I'll just nice. write a play. Write a play. Nice, nice. Casual. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. Uh, speaking of that, you said that you write uh, for TV to sort of support your playwriting. Yeah. What is it about theater that is, makes it your artistic medium of choice? I mean, I don't know. There, I just like uh -huh. I love yeah. collaborating with people. I love working with actors. I love working with a director. I love working with designers. I love the live experience that mm -hmm. goes along with theater. And I mean, I also like my dad's a minister, so I grew up going to church. Okay. And oh. so I think there's like something just like very. I don't know, like familiar and visceral and nostalgic mm -hmm. at the same time being in theater. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like you can, I don't know, you can drop people into character and just like let an audience live with real people in a way that the TV medium mm -hmm. just doesn't allow. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the part of the interview where we do a lightning round. Uh -oh. So Let's see what happens. <laughs> They're excited. Yes. Well, this is our first time too, so I'm just <laughs> as excited as you are, or scared, perhaps. <laughs> All right, here okay. we go. Favorite playwright. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a terrible question. Make it. I'm trying to keep There's it general. There's so many. Okay, I'm gonna say Marcia Norman. Great. Favorite Ooh. Shakespeare play. Uh, Titus Andronicus. Who would play you on stage? Ooh. Who would play me on stage? Like whoever the hottest person in the world is <laughs> right now. Yes. <laughs> Great. The right answer. <laughs> Who writes the play about your life? Who writes the play mm. about my life? Like aside from myself? Okay. Yourself? Yeah. Or uh, someone else? Uh, I don't. I don't know. 
You can I pass. Don't know. I'm you gonna can pass. pass on that one. Okay. That's like a hard one. Favorite TV show that isn't yours? Favorite TV? Oh, Succession, for sure. Play of oh, yours you want yeah. to see adapted as a film or TV series? Uh, 72 Miles to Go, actually. Oh, great. Yeah. Who direct it? Um, probably myself. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> Best theater theory. production yeah. you've ever seen? Best production? You've ever seen, yeah. Oh my god. Best theater production? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I don't know. Um, oh my god, The Life and Death of Marina Abramovich at, um, the Armory. Oh, that was oh okay. Life changing. Wow, really? It was incredible. Yeah. When was that? I want to say like five years ago. Oh, Did shit. you look into her eyes? Was that that one or was that something? <laughs> I think that was something different. No, that was, mo yeah, yeah, that, that was the moment. Yeah, that was the moment. That was the moment thing. Experience. But it was like incredible. Got it. Yeah. All right, Wonderful. thank you. That's it. Woo! Yeah. Your play, your yeah. play, 72 Miles to Go, is currently at Roundabout. It is a story spanning a decade about a family split by deportation. So obviously this is very topical, yeah. but in what ways is this personal to you? Like, what was your impetus oh, for this? gosh, I mean, I well, first of all, like, writing The Border and writing about, like, the Mexican-American identity and the Latinx identity is something that I... Um, and like many plays, like pretty much all of my work I sort of explore, so this is, mm -hmm. I think, a, a culmination of a lot of other things that I've written. Um, it's a subject matter that I feel very deeply passionate about, and I feel like it's like one of the biggest human rights issues of this generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel a real responsibility as a writer mm -hmm. to give voice to that and to give a platform to that as much as possible. And then, like, on a personal level, I mean, my, my mom grew up in Tucson, which is where the play is set, so there was always mm -hmm. this, like, I don't know, growing up, the way she talked about, like, living on the border was such an, a magical experience for her. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather is Mexican, and, you know, they his family Im immigrated to the United States and experienced, like, a ton of racism and prejudice mm -hmm. and really, like, became all about we have to assimilate into the United States, and that means like we have to denounce our culture. Right. And so, in a lot of ways, growing up, it was also like the elephant in the room, this thing that we weren't right. really allowed to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so, I also feel like, you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out like who my own family identity is and yeah. what that means to us now. And then, like all of the characters in the in the play are really based on my family, <laughs> even though I like didn't set out to write my family, mm -hmm. I accidentally wrote my family. Right. Like, my father's a minister, and my mother's a nurse, and mm -hmm. my, my brothers are in the military. And, and that's reflective in your show? Yeah, oh, like wow. all of the characters are like sort of one of these um, like, working class, iconic, mm -hmm. you know, American figures, but they're all really like also mm -hmm. my family. Yeah, and American positions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's fascinating, it's, you know, if something was taken away or inadvertently like left away. How wonderful as a writer to be able to yeah. kind of try to come back to it. Yeah, you know, for that's sure. That's very special. For sure. Um, going off of that, so authenticity seems to be a very important part of your work. Yeah. Um, why is that and how does this drive your writing? I mean, goodness, I, I think that, you know, the most like, universal and relatable stories that we can tell are rooted in like our own unique experience mm -hmm. and the and the more authentic something is actually the more like universal it becomes mm -hmm. but I also just feel like so, like so much empathy for my characters and I feel such an immense responsibility to do them justice mm -hmm. and to give them dignity and so in order to do that you know you really have to like understand the minutia of what their everyday life is mm -hmm. and where they come from and you know. <laughs> yeah, it makes you more personally invested. Yeah, and you know? it makes it much more intimate and grounded and mm -hmm. you know, and I think so often like tropes and stereotypes and cliches about women and people of color right. are, are not that get perpetuated are not so much like people setting out with like malice intention, but people right. that just like don't know and don't want to do the homework right. and their mm -hmm. due diligence to really understand, right. you know? It sounds like uh, like the whole controversy around American Dirt. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 That shit is insane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love that in, in, you know, writing that wrong in that there's someone doing something like American Dirt and there's someone like you doing 72 miles to go. So, yeah. you know, I think that's important. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, it's very complicated because sure. it's like, sure. 
<laughs> yeah. There's, there's yeah. layers. There's a lot there's of layers there. There's so many there. layers. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, it's really fascinating. And I mean, I think that's somebody that definitely just sort of like ran with like right. cliches and tropes. Right. And yeah, and authenticity often gets much more uh, sort of controversial when let's say you're not writing about your own personal experience, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in that climate, how do you, do you tell yeah. quote unquote authentic stories Although without, like, without seeming like you're co-opting? Stephen Ali like Gerges is like an amazing example right. of that, you know, mm. I feel like he's like, the only white man in America that you're like, yes, please write more people of color, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, he's yeah. I remember being surprised that he wasn't, wasn't Latino or something. I, know. Like, I just assumed, I'm like, Girgis is Girgis? Like, how do I yeah. not know that it's yeah. Egyptian, actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that he's, he's, half, uh, yeah. he's half Egyptian. So yeah. It's, yeah. All right, so we're coming down to the end. I'm gonna get my computer here. I'm so excited about okay. this. I'm, very, I'm actually really excited. Okay, so for this next segment, we, we understand that, Hillary, you're a big uh, horse fan and equestrian. It's true. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, it. aficionado, it's savant. It's, it's very um, true. You've been riding horses for how long My now? whole life. Wow. The first time I, I was on a horse, I was like two or three. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I found pictures of famous <laughs> riders from history <laughs> on horseback, okay. and I want you to judge them, OK? Yes. <laughs> OK, here we go. I was Kennedy. born for them. <laughs> so these two pictures. <laughs> Okay. So they're not on it. Okay. They're not on it. But yes. we have S. He Hinton of The Outsiders. Okay. And then versus Jack London with both with their horses, both looking lovingly into their eyes. Into Who mm. rode it better? Okay, wait. I gotta like get this a little bit yes. closer so I can really. Uh... Yes. Oh man. He actually looks like he knows what she's, he's doing. Like the way he he's holding the, the way the way that he's holding yeah. the lead rope. Right. Got it, got it. Okay, so that Jack London wins. Yeah, Jack London wins. So, so Essie Hinton is purely doing it for the picture. Definitely, women. definitely. <laughs> it's very posed. Okay, it is. great. Yeah. Jack London moves on. All right. Jack London versus Leo Tolstoy. Oh, on oh. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Let me see Tolstoy. I've got my favorite. Um. Tolstoy looks pretty good. Actually. Tolstoy looks yeah. pretty. He looks comfortable on He's that thing. He's a little. His weight, his balance is a little bit. <laughs> He's uh, also like pulling he, a little high. Well, but. he is, and also see like how his mm -hmm. hip is a little bit. I don't know. I'm so uh -huh. dyslexic, but but he to should. The left? You, you want to like counterbalance when a uh, horse is in a trot. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. He almost looks like he's he's posing too. He's like, oh, let me he get does. my face. Get my face. All right. He so does. Jack London wins again. But I'm gonna give him, you know, some points for his uh, his foot possession. Okay, so who who wrote it better? I'm still gonna go with Jack London. Okay, Jack, Jack London. London wins. All right, Jack yeah. London yeah. beats Leo Tolstoy. Okay, Jack London I'm actually really versus in this right now. famed <gasps> African American uh, essayist and intellectual Booker T. Washington. Wow. Okay, Booker. Let's see what you got. Um, Booker actually looks pretty good. Booker looks uh, comfortable. He looks quite distinguished. He does look distinguished. I, this is hard though because his his uh, his stirrups are a little bit too short. Wow! <laughs> they are. Wow! This is and so he's intense. Slouching just a little bit. So how do you but write it's it? Hard it's because hard because like Jack is literally just holding right. a lead rope. Okay. So who wrote it better? The man, <laughs> the man riding the horse, or the man holding, <laughs> holding, holding, the, holding the, horse? the horse. I mean, I'm gonna he go with the man on well. the horse. I'm gonna give him that. Okay. Last one. For the win. We have our own playwright, what? Sam <laughs> Shepard. <laughs> Noted playwright of such plays as, um, what's it? Uh, uh, Curse of the Starving Class. And Very Child. Very Child and True West. Yeah. Cowboy Mouth. Cowboy Mouth. We ha oh, actually, that one's a, oops, sorry. That one's a good one, too. But also, I like this picture better. I feel like this one you would appreciate more. That one. Uh, He's writing it. Ooh. Writing, writing. Yeah. Sam Shepard yeah, versus Booker. Pretty. Sam Shepard is, he's jumping. So yeah, he's, he's jumping. Gonna, he's and look at his form. I feel like Sam like really is on a uh, ranch like daily. <laughs> <laughs> or was, rest in peace, Sam yeah. Shepard. Yeah, I mean, he's a little, a little high out of the saddle. And oh his, yeah? His, Very. His, his uh, elbow should be down a little. 
is that dangerous? This angle is a little, like you want to always have, so the rain and up to your, you always want this to be like a, like this on the same plane. Uh -huh. So that your your arms just become got an extension it, of the rain. Got it, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, otherwise you're gonna like be jerking that poor horse. In the how way. how hard is it to get a shot like this, like this Napoleon shot? I that's that's a yeah. That's talent. I mean that's a a horse that's probably trained to do that. But, I see, I see, uh -huh. I see. It's, so I guess it's Sam Shepard. Yeah. I ding mean, ding 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 ding. Congratulations. <laughs> The late Sam Shepard, you're beating the late Booker T. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> rest All right, I'm gonna clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> All of you, rest <laughs> in peace. Yes. Oh Wait, thank my you. God! Thank you for your work. Yeah, so 72, <laughs> 72 <laughs> miles to go uh, is at the Laura Pelz Theater. It's playing now until May 3rd. Go check it out. You can get tickets at roundabouttheater.org. Hillary Bettis. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you for participating yes. in our yeah. new format. Wild games. Yeah. Like and subscribe. You know you want to. Right there. Just do it. It's somewhere. Good. It's somewhere over mm. here. You know what to Crush do. Crush that likes button. Likes button. Other violent terms. <laughs>